<laughs> Hi, Sasha. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Good. Um, really, I really enjoyed watching the film. I enjoyed you watching, um, playing these two extremely similar characters physically, but very different characters. How do you go about studying to sort of put in that kind of performance? of duality. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I was just so excited, honestly, when I read the scripts, because you can read thrillers and, and this type of movie and just think, oh, I know what's going to happen. And I didn't feel that way. I, I was shocked by the twist. And then the thought of being able to play twins was just so exciting because they're so different. You need to make it believable that, you know, that you're playing two different characters that you believe on screen that these are two different people. And it must've seemed a little silly to watch, um, but at home I was walking different. I was making different tones of my voice and I was developing these two people and, and trying to figure out what makes them tick. Why are they the way that they are? And not just what's on the page. It's like, this sounds silly, but like, what's their favorite color? What, what, what movie do they love? You know, what do they go for? Everything that makes up a person. Um, you have to do it, you know, times two. And I I loved every second of that. And of course, Zoe is so confident and so powerful. And to make that reflection in her walk and in her tone of voice and in the things that she does and the way that she responds to things, those things are so important. And Anna too, I mean, for both sides. So I think it was just a really rewarding process, but then it's nerve wracking because you're just kind of like, well, I hope, I hope it worked and I hope people love it. And I hope that they believe it on screen. And it's a testament to everybody involved to make that happen from the cameraman with twin tech to you know the director, the writer, like we, we all put in so much work, um, costume, hair and makeup, all of it to, to make it believable and, and to make it fun to watch. Did you feel like every time you put on the outfit of one, you instantly became that person? Yeah, I, I honestly did. I, I think, you know, when we first started filming, I felt like I knew them so well that when we were changing back and forth with costume, I didn't, uh, I didn't really even have to think about it. It just, it just is what it, it was just, okay. And now I'm Anna and, and those tendencies came naturally and, and vice versa. Um, I can't even really explain it. I don't even know how it just, it's, it's like a flipping a switch. Which of the two characters would you say was similar, was similar to you? Or are you like an amalgamation of the two? I mean, they do a lot of crazy things and um, I, I'd like to think that I don't have a ton of similarities, but I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle. I feel like Anna, you know, I, I would hope that I'm, I'm less naive than Anna is, but I'm hope, I hope that I'm not as cynical as, as Zoe. I, I think that there's, you know, now being close to my thirties, that them being in their thirties, it's like, you, you tend to care what people think, or you, you tend to not care what people think as much as you used to in your twenties. And I think, I think they're there in many ways. And I hope that I'm there. I feel like I am. I feel like there's a lot of growth that's happened. And, and I think the similarity with Zoe is it's, it's like closer to that side where she's like, I, I don't need to rely on anybody else for my own happiness. I need to create it. And, and she's on the darker end of it, but I think it's important to learn that you need to stand on your own and nobody else can fill that void. Um, and, and I think they kind of teach each other lessons in that own way. I think it's a lesson to the audience as weird and as little as it is that that little piece is, you know, maybe don't be so trusting immediately and stay true to yourself, know who you are before um, you dive into anything. There are some few quite steamy scenes in this. How do you approach uh, sort of uh, those kinds of scenes? Do you work closely with the sort of the director or screenwriter and just say, I'd like to be in charge of this? And uh, mm -hmm. how, how does that actually work? So we had an intimacy coordinator and thank goodness for her. Um, I would have loved to have had an intimacy coordinator on other projects. And, and mm -hmm. I this was the first time I, I had that opportunity. And Parker is awesome. Um, and, you know, there's so many variables that come into play when it comes to in, in intimate scenes. And I think if you are able to have a friend in that, Parker was a friend and that immediately helped because it's hard to explain because most people don't, you know, do something like this on camera with, with somebody that's their friend. It's a very unique situation. Actors do weird things for their job. And for whatever reason, if you are friends, all of the other stuff that comes with it feels natural. 
It's not something that you would regularly do, but because you have a base connection, that foundation, um, it really, really helps. And if you don't have that, it very quickly becomes negative. Thankfully, that was not the case here. Our intimacy coordinator was hilarious. I, I've i never laughed as much as I have laughed on this set. And, you know, these scenes aren't as sexy as they look. Sometimes you've got foam in between you. Um, you know, you've got weird things taped to you. And like, you know, you're in precarious positions and it's like, okay, that we cut and now it's done. And it's such a weird thing. I mean, everything from like functionality, like, oh, well, no, we can see the boob tape or I can't get his belt undone. I mean, it's just ridiculous. There are ridiculous things that happen. And if it can, it can be fun. If As long as it's fun, then it becomes um, natural on screen. And so definitely a challenge, but but this was a good kind, not um, not a negative kind. And I think, you know, being a mom now, I've got a three-year-old. And so this was the first project that has been this revealing, especially since having him. And I, I had to believe in myself the way that Zoe believes in herself. And as dark and as twisted as she is, she had such an incredible confidence to her. And I needed to embrace that in myself in order to play her properly. And so I think, I, I think it helped me in a lot of ways. And I'm thankful that I got to play a character like that because, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of pressure as a woman and bouncing back and, and all of the things that come from being a mom um, and playing a character that's not a mom where you you have to pretend like that that's not the case. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting. But as far as the intimacy stuff goes, to answer your first question, um, thankfully, this was this was a good experience and and Parker's lovely. We have a lot of similarities. You know, we've both known our partners for a long time. We're both married. We have little kids. And and so I think all of those things that that could have been different weren't, and it just worked. Well, you both did an absolutely fantastic job and thank you very much for your time and congratulations again on this and I've really enjoyed it. So yeah, good luck with it. <laughs> thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys! Hey you guys!